Hello, what is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this video. In this series we are building an Anthos runner in 3D using Unity and we do it in a quick and dirty fashion. Simple, easy and fast. When we are done we will potentially release the game on the mobile app stores. In today's episode I want to share a quick update on how the current state of the game looks so far and on what I have worked in the last couple of days. In the first three episodes we successfully prototyped some of the basics of our Endless Runner. We decided which assets we want to use, coded a simple character controller so that we can move through the level and we started implementing our spawn manager. And we enabled him to spawn roads and side content like houses and properties. Basically everything we need so that we can move endlessly through the level and we have some visuals going on. Still, we have quite a road ahead of us and some core elements like obstacles and so on are still missing. But for me it's important that the game feels right and is appealing and fun to work with. So I decided that now it's about time to take a step back and optimize or refine some of the elements of the game so far before we can move on and to add more functionality. To be more specific, we had three issues in total which completely annoyed me and which I took care of in the last couple of days. So with not much further to do, let me give you a quick update what I have changed and how the game is currently looking. Okay. So the first issue I didn't like that much was the space between the houses. As you can see here and as you surely already noticed that looks kinda odd. I used about 60 meters per prefab and I put a house and some trees on there but it was way too big, kinda doesn't feel right to me. So I shortened them down to about half the size. Of course I had to quickly adjust every single prefab I built so far. Fortunately I don't have uh, that many yet. Of course I also needed to adjust the variables in my scripts and also the frequency of the spawning since one roadblock now equals two side content prefabs. But I think it was worth it and looks way better now. I might change the size again in the future and I also may add some variation. But I think for now we are good to go. At least it's way better than before. Also what you can see here in the next footage is that our shadow distance is way too short and you might also have noticed that the shadows are a little bit too dark. That kind of kills the overall feeling of the game at least for me. So I had to adjust this by playing around with the shadow strength of the directional light and I also played around with the angle of the shadow so that it adds um, a little bit of life to the scene. And finally for the shadow distance I had to change the quality settings in my project preferences and I think it looks fine now. Maybe I will change this value in the future depending on how the performance is on mobile but for now I think we're fine and I think the um, result looks way better than before. We also have a nasty little glitch with the movement. Um, it's caused by some quite not so perfect mesh colliders on the road prefab. When we move to the left or to the right, movement gets kinda strange after a short period of time. So I just went and replaced the mesh colliders by my own colliders. I simply put them together by multiple box colliders, uh, one for the road itself and two for the sidewalk and that fixed it so far. Now our movement is pretty smooth and working properly. So far so good. I have also redone some of my side content prefabs and also added some more so that the level has more life and variance overall. I surely have to add some more in the future soon to go up to about 15 or 20 um, side content prefabs per level so that it looks more natural and uh, doesn't seem like it's repeating itself. But we built this up step by step and for now I think we're fine. Okay guys, now let me share with you a quick before and after compersion so that you can see the difference. This was before I implemented the changes. You see the distance between the houses and the shadows and also this movement glitch which was kind of strange. And now let's take a look at the current version. You see it's looking way better overall with the optimized shadows and the rebuild prefabs. I also feel like the comic look I want to achieve slowly but surely gets established. Also the movement glitch is gone and now we can move through the level smoothly without any issues. I hope you liked this short little update video. If so, please leave a like, comment or subscribe to stay updated. And I also appreciate your feedback or any idea or tip on how we can improve this endless runner. Coming up in the next episode, we will continue to work on our spawn manager to add some more functionality to spawn obstacles on the road which we must dodge. So guys, thanks for watching, see you in the next video.